Uh, hey everybody, welcome to the Covenant Network broadcast. Bishop Randy Morgan here. I'm with Carla and David right now. Elijah is on his way and Janica is on her way. Um, they're late, but I won't call attention to their lateness. <laughs> Um, so that's okay, but that's what Average Joe's is about when we do these things. They're just videos that uh, take people that are from different uh, backgrounds, whatever, different spiritual backgrounds, different denominations, things like that, but who have surrendered their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and come together with a, a like precious faith and mutual understanding. And so today we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. And you're going to get five probably vastly different approaches, but you're also going to get five very similar ideologies. So before we get started, let's pray. So Father, I just pray for this time. I pray that you give us understanding, that you give us insight. Lord, spiritual warfare is on the mind of people. So I just pray right now that you give insight and direction and revelation knowledge in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, um, in Fire Institute, we're actually talking about uh, spiritual warfare. And the Word of God is very direct about warfare. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, um, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in heavenly places. And there's an unseen realm around us all of the time. And in that unseen realm, the Holy Spirit's always very actively involved trying to get us to God's purposes for our lives. But in that unseen realm, there's also demonic activity always trying to get us off track from God's purpose for our lives. Mainly because God loves us, devil hates us. It's a simplified statement, but it's still true. Um, and so, with that in mind, uh, I just want to open it up. What does spiritual warfare mean to y'all? Do you want to start or do you want to start? <laughs> oh my goodness. Being well aware that, as you said, that we do, we do, we do dwell in, two, in fact, we're in two worlds. Yeah. We live in the natural, and we do know since we're born again, we are Christians, we're spirit-filled, we carry the glory of God within our being, we know that we also live in a spiritual realm. And it's, it's that, I don't want to use too big of a word here, but what the word that comes to mind is that juxtaposition. It's that careful positioning between the two, knowing who we are in God, but yet having to live out this life in the flesh here on this earth. And being, for me, it's being constantly reminded that th this is a battle. Yeah. This really is a battle. And I just, sometimes it just, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but then what comes to mind is definitely greater is he within me than he yeah. that is in the world. Amen. And so that's, you know, that's one of the scriptures. Another one that comes to mind, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm very much aware that it is a spiritual battle, greater is he. You know, greater is yeah. I mean, greater, greater, so much more greater. And I can do all things. Yes. I can do anything, all things, everything. And I can withstand spiritual onslaught. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so you would say that the first thing that comes to your mind when you're in the middle of a spiritual warfare, spiritual battle, is scripture. Oh, yes. It's the first thing that flies into your mind. One of the first things. Particularly yes. scriptures about your identity. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Knowing knowing who I am. And I think that that since I've been here at New Covenant, that has been the thing that uh of God has just so totally hit my brain with and my spirit and all of me with it's like you are mine this is who you are yeah. and live it stand and it, it declare it decree it yeah. you know not and not only for myself but for the house entire and for covenant number two this is who we are and knowing that we we can fight the good fight amen definitely with the with you see the words of our mouth, uh -huh. life and death and the power of the tongue. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Carla. Well, for me, I, I grew up um, in like a small town Baptist church, so any of this spiritual warfare stuff was never <laughs> talked about. I had no idea about any of it until I came here, and it's been what's kind of awakened me to realizing that, well, realizing that we do have the authority mm -hmm. to take care of the things in life that are. You don't just have to accept your circumstances for what they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, we really can change 
our lives. We can change our destiny. We can change the environments around us. We can change, you know, the outcome of, of things in life. We don't just have to sit back and accept what the enemy is handing us. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a reason for everything, and we can find a way to overcome it through the blood, through the word, through you know. Yeah. Amen. 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 One of the I wanted to read a quick scripture real quick. Did you have something to say back and forth? No, I mean that that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I fully agree with everything you just said. <laughs> totally. Well, we're reading through Mark in the home groups and we're in Mark chapter three today. And and I've read the New Testament several many, many times in uh, thirty years that I've been serving the Lord. Lord, it's been thirty years. Um, and and I started underlining things and highlighting things even in a different way and making confessions out of Scripture. And I guess it just hit me in the first three chapters of Mark more now than it ever has in 30 years that Jesus did three things primarily. Number one, he preached the Word. Um, it says that he preached to the crowds. He preached to the different people. Number two, he healed the sick. And number three, he cast out devils. Now, those were the top three things. And every time he just did those three simple things over and over and over, it says um, a few days later when Jesus entered again Capernaum, the people heard that he was there. So many gathered, there was no room. And over and over and over it says the multitudes gathered unto him. The crowds gathered unto him. And um, just over and over, it even says Jesus entered a house, and, a, and again, a crowd gathered so that so big that they weren't even able to eat. And one event, Jesus actually had to get in a boat and preach from the lake because the crowd was so great on the shore. And um, I see that as a trifold ministry, that he preached the word, healed the sick, and cast out devils. Now, in the modern body of Christ, we love the word. Um, we love to pray for the sick. Um, whenever somebody gets healed of migraines, we, we really rejoice. And, but it says that Jesus couldn't do any great works in a certain place except he healed a few illnesses like headaches and stuff. And so I got to thinking that's on the low end of Jesus' scale of, of being able to perform miracles. The things that were on the low end was the minor healings. And we rejoice at the minor healings. I think if, the, and leave alone the whole devil thing, yeah. casting out devils, the body of Christ just gets freaked out with that. And so if the church, I believe, will regain a mindset not to chase devils in every doorknob, not to look for devils in every corner or things like that, but if we'll regain a mindset that not only are we to preach the word and heal the sick, but we're to drive out devils, we're to cast them out. And, and if we'll recapture that, I believe then the harvest is going to start coming in in new dimensions um, because of the supernatural ministry of Jesus in us. And you said it a minute ago. You said greater. Come on in. Oh, that's Angela? Yeah. I couldn't tell who that was. Um, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So if Jesus is on the inside of me, yes. whenever I see what Jesus is doing, I need to do what Jesus has done. And so, you know, I, I'm claiming that and I'm making confessions every single day that the Jesus in me confronts the kingdom of darkness and destroys the strategies. If I uh, were to ask you, Carla, we were talking about something when we came in together and, and you were saying some of your general thoughts about spiritual warfare. Um, what are those, and, and if you can, tie it into to, to what I just said, if you're able to. Okay. Okay. Um. I think one of the, I mean, one of the great, the most important things, or I don't know, something that is really good mm -hmm. to have is your relationship with God when you're dealing with spiritual warfare, because that's going to be, he's going to be the one that directs you and tells you like, hey, there's yes. something going on. You know, he's going to increase your discernment. The more you can hear from him, you know, the closer you are to him, the more you can hear from him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's going to tell you like, hey, this is what's up. This is what's going on around you, you know do something about it. Yeah. And then he'll even tell you what to do about it or point you in the direction of resources to get you where what you need. The stuff is out there, you know. So we don't have to depend on formulas. We no. can just depend on relationships. Absolutely. I mean I like that. I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Some formulas are good. Yeah. But yes. we don't have to depend on them. 
Um, we know the formulas so that when he does give us insight, we're able to implement those strategies. Yeah. Okay. Well, because, I mean, if you go in, you know, too heavy trying to hit the, the heavy hitters sometimes, it, it's not going to be as effective as if you just kind of go in and you deal with the stuff that's on you first. Yeah. And then you go for the, the stuff that's in your household. Then you yeah. go for the stuff that's in your neighborhood. You know, and you can kind of... Like a gradual chipping away yeah. Yeah. of the wall, yeah. basically. Yeah. You start yeah. ground that's level. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you if you yes. want to take out Walmart, mm. um, you <laughs> yeah, right. okay, bad you analogy. Start, bad analogy, but bad you analogy. start by flattening the tires of all the employees, right. and if you can get all the employees right. chipped away at, then that one place is going to shut down. Absolutely. And if you can do that in enough places strategically, then all of Walmart Absolutely. begins to not function, and it's the same with the Kingdom of Darkness. We deal with it on the lower levels first, and as we do that then it begins to deconstruct the greater things that are over regions and areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I was more thinking on a smaller level, like individually. <laughs> Absolutely. See? I mean, you can, you're right. You know, yeah. I, see, when, when we think about these things, I always look for what's next, the bigger things. Yeah. But on the individual basis, mm -hmm. that I think that's how Jesus dealt with everything. And so Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yes. we see him casting out devils from individuals. But by Acts chapter 16, um, a whole town was in an uproar. Mm -hmm. That Ephesians, uh, whenever the uh, Ephesus, when Paul and Silas cast out the spirit from the girl, Jesus' impact had already so grown that from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to Ephesians, yes. or excuse me, to Acts, that um, it disturbed a whole region. Mm -hmm. It dislodged a uh, principality. So you're talking about an individual basis. Pretty much. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, you have your relationship with God and, and you let that kind of slack a little bit, mm -hmm. that's going to leave the door open for the enemy to come in mm -hmm. even more. The hedge you, gets open. Yes, and then before you know it, you've got all this junk on you and you can't be as effective in the kingdom if you're carrying around a whole bunch of junk. Like, you yeah. got to take that off and then... What are some ways to take it off? Worship. Worship. Being in the Word. Worship. Praying. Word. Praying. Praying. Yes. Repentance. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Repentance, repentance is huge. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiving yeah. people when they, oh. that's huge forgiveness. Like, yeah. not just forgiving, yes. I mean, forgiving people around you, but forgiving yourself. Oh, boy. That one will take you down. Oh, like, yes. If we, if the church as a whole would realize, would take just one little verse out of the Bible, it would so revolutionize us. Because Jesus, the word says Jesus knew no offense. Right. None whatsoever. If the church would not, if the if Christians would not be so offended, right. if the church would just learn to let go. I mean, we we would we would be such a free people. Yeah. We could move, Pastor. I, I think one of the things that we really enjoy, and this is Satan's greatest strategy. Cancer is not his greatest strategy. Mm -hmm. Physical maladies are not his greatest strategy. His greatest strategy is to get people hurt yeah. and offended. Yes. And if he gets them offended, they enter into covenant. Yes. Um, physical maladies are courtships with the enemy. Offense is the marriage ceremony. Mm -hmm. That we actually mm -hmm. get into covenant with the enemy when we buy into offense. And we bind ourselves to that and when we bind ourselves to that we become ineffective that's it and we we're oppressed we hold that and the one reason jesus was so effective no not the one reason the one reason he was so effective was because he had the holy spirit on him right. but one of his greatest tools was he never became offended never 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 he didn't let what people said about him even when they were snatching his beard out yes he didn't get offended Forgive. They don't know what they're doing. He forgave them, and not only did he forgive them, he asked the Father to forgive them. That's it. Because they just didn't know. Yeah. And I think that is one of our, our strongest weapons against the enemy is forgiveness. Is forgiveness. Yeah. Go ahead. What are I don't know. I'm just sitting here thinking being offended is, and, and since we're talking about spiritual warfare, being offended is, as you said, it's one of the major, if not the major, as you said. Yeah. That, that, that 
4,000 pound gorilla in the room. Right. The spiritual force that's hanging over the church. And, and I am, one of the many things that I'm grateful for about being here is because you have taught us to, by the confession of our mouths, mm -hmm. uh, we can absolutely change atmospheres. Yeah. We can walk and talk and speak and wherever we go. And, and so I put it to the test, just, just declaring the word, yeah. just declaring uh, what I am and who I am. My standing in God, you know, my standing because of the blood, my standing because of the cross, my standing because of the Holy Spirit. Just walking in that and dispelling, literally, mm -hmm. just dispelling the darkness. Right. Dispelling, you know, where, whereas in my own personal life, and I've realized it more lately than ever, ever before now, that I have the power within me to loose <laughs> to loose the cloth right. of the enemy that's just so gripped my life for so very long. And I'm like, no, no more. Because the word says, right. greater is, you know, like yeah. I said before, greater is he, that's greater is he than you know. anything that's in the world. Oh, and a scripture again that comes to mind is like Isaiah 61. And and, and I brought it up on, on right. my phone. Yeah. shine. Whew. Man, oh man, man, oh man. Is that Isaiah 61? Well, no. That one is, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh. But he is the Amplified, me the Amplified puts it, we're to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives. Yeah. That, you know, I didn't even know you were going to do this today. I was yeah. like, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's it. And I've been, I've been stuck on this now for the past, like, two or three weeks. I can't let it go. And now I understand why. Right. Because we've started now this series you know, of spiritual warfare, and it's like, and it's like, Holy Spirit, you know, Holy Spirit is so wonderful because He leads you into all truth, and He'll He'll direct you in things to come. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I understand, and I couldn't understand why I was stuck in this, but I'm like, now I understand. Yeah. To loose those who are spiritually captive. Yeah. That's you know. That's awesome. It Amen. is. It is. Well, we're welcoming Janica to the table, but here's what we're going to do. Wave at everybody. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop the video, and I'm going to pick back up with part two right now. Um, and uh, as soon as I pause everything and, and get us settled in, and so it'll be a second video right next to this one.